Diffusion du savoir, formation agricole, accompagnement, prestations vidéo. Vers de terre production s'engage pour la transition agroécologique. Hello everyone. Donc on va My name lancer is la vidéo, ça devrait arriver très rapidement. Everybody knows me as a Jukasa. Donc voilà, vous allez... I had a strong experience with Lucien Sidi. And first of all, I'd like to thank for all people that organized this webinar about the tribute to Lucien Sidi and Hubert Charpentier. It was an honor for me to be selected one of the people to talk about this experience and the work that we developed at least 30 years with a good contribution of Lucien. And I'm going to talk about SCV et la dynamique de la séquestration du carbone de sol. Before to share the experience about the carbon dynamics, I'd like to and to express a few words to Lucien. He was a, a special friend. We had a, a lot of things uh, together on the field. And if I use one word to summarize his energy and all things that he did for the no two, he is the lion the semi act. It's impressive the energy and the capacity to share knowledge and experience. And he was uh, very important for the development of uh, UEPG and the Soil Organic Matter Lab in the UEPG, creating a strong partnership between CIHAD with support with AFD that injected uh, is a, a very expressive uh, contribution uh, to the lab to assist and develop a course to training many people for at least 13 countries uh, uh, associated with a CIRAD uh, partnership. Okay, to talk about uh, SCV is talk about carbon agriculture. And carbon agriculture means maximize soil carbon accumulation fixed by crops during the photosynthesis process. And represent production system with high carbon input and low CO2 emission for the soil. This summarizes what it means carbon agriculture. Combining many species, a lot of species, different kind of strategies, but with on one goal, high input and low emissions of CO2 for the soil. Okay, but before to talk about the di dynamic of carbon, though, <clears throat> we need to understand how does carbon balance work in the soil. It's very simple if we try to summarize in only one slide. Look, the equation is simple. Soil organic carbon results from carbon input by via biomass minus carbon losses from soil. And we have four steps. Number one is the carbon from photosynthesis that represents the input to crop residues, to crop residues, biomass, and above ground and below ground. <clears throat> The second, third, and fourth steps 
represents the losses because uh, we, we lose carbon from the plant respiration, the soil respiration, the composition from erosion and leaching from the deep layers in the soil. So carbon balance can be summarized in two impacts. Number one, when the carbon input through crop red is less than the carbon output from the composition, the soil becomes an emitter or carbon emission from the soil. The second is a carbon input greater than the carbon output. The soil becomes a sink, accumulation, sequestration. So we, we're going to talk our presentation based in, in some articles. This is a 2022 <clears throat> article that summarizes almost 35 years, 30 years of research. But was very important because we started this program almost 10 years ago with a lot of details. We try to understand all cycle of carbon associated with no till. Since 2013, we published 45 peer review papers about this subject. And we selected six milestone papers about carbon and no-till system who supported this 2022 article. And we had the first, uh, we talked about the uh, or soil organic carbon fraction, the process and the mechanism of loss and recover. The second one, the aggregation, the depletion when the plow is used and when we restore to a different kind of cropping system under no-till. And after we, we understood the long-term no-till system impacts in the dynamics, resilience, soil resilience and the relationship with agronomic productivity. What's well, very important because we define some parameters important for the landmark or the remarkable paper publishing land degradation journal. When we define there in this paper, the minimum amount of carbon to reach the uh, <clears throat> dynamic carbon equilibrium in the soil. And, this, and after that, we studied how high water soils can be carbon saturated. We try to study the mechanism what can, what is, <clears throat> is happen. And in the end, uh, how no two, deliver uh, a carbon stabilization and a saturation in high water soils. And if we look at the six milestones paper, three of them, Lucien was, had a very important contribution. So we're gonna start uh, our presentation, the, the, the data using the example of tropical area. And the tropical we measure in green, and uh, native vegetation, carbon above, roots and litter parts, uh, accounting 95.5 tons per hectare. In the soil, until 100, <clears throat> 100 centimeters, 141 tons per hectare, summing 2,026 tons per hectare. So, this is a, a experimental station located in the Fundação Rio Verde when Lucien started the experiment there. Uh, uh, and we selected to compare undisturbed soil under native vegetation. And you can see the aggregates completely uh, agrouped and the water is clean. And 
we measure the losses uh, due the conversion of uh, uh, agri to an agricultural area with a conventional tillage. And you can see in this block, uh, so the same soil is uh, around 150 meters far. Um, the same soil. The difference is the native soil, we maintain it, the original organic carbon content. And the right side under conventional, we lost almost 64% of carbon, especially in the 20, zero to 20 centimeters. So, uh, and you can see that the soil completely dispersed and make it like a soup. Every, uh, all uh, conversion is starting based in deforestation, Oh well, you 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 use a slash, use a, a big chain, uh, and after uh, you burning all vegetation, take the the, the noble uh, wood, and after you use a fire, and soil tillage to keep the soil uh, uh, adequate for the first uh, planting with the crop. Uh, in, in this process, we lost 95.6 ton per hectare from the vegetation and 25 tons in eight years. Only eight years, we lost 25 tons, 27, sorry. And if you sum vegetation plus soil tillage, 122.6 tons we lost in one hectare during when we convert it and keep <clears throat> plow every year until this period. So what's happened? This is a profile of losses do uh, conventional tillage. If you're looking at the first bar, the zero to 20 centimeters, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 8, 80 to 100 centimeters layer. And you can see uh, uh, expressive, expressive, expressive loss in the zero to 20 centimeters accounted for 54% of the total carbon loss in the zero to 20. And the impact of plow erosion oh, and decomposition, special decomposition. And we had a very important uh, carbon losses in 20 to 100 centimeters layer, accounted 50%. If for the Cerrado region, it's very important to understand why it happened. Well, let's see this rainfall distribution around the year. We had it between the, the, the months with uh, excess of water, January to March, October to December, in between April to September, no, no rain, water deficit. And if we keep, if we keep the soil uncovered in this period, we had a strong impact in the organic matter losses. Let's try to understand. The water storage during the rainy season evaporates through the capillarity during the dry season. And this water vapor stimulates the microbial biomass and it starts the process of decomposition of the organic matter and become continuous. And the mostly bio substance like uh, uh, simple sugars, proteins, some polysaccharides are more volatile and go towards to the soil surface as a CO2. And the lack of soil cover, if you maintain uncovered soil, you accelerate and promote carbon loss. And the losses in the dry period can reach up to 40% of the 
the carbon storage the year before. Look how important is you keep the soil covered during all year long, special during the dry period. Okay, what is the strategy to, to change and try to restore the process lost? No till system based in the principles. The principle of no till that is very well spread all over the world. Number one, no soil plow, no disturbance, permanent soil cover, and diversity in the crop rotation. This create a base to the sustainable of agriculture. So the first stage that we talk a lot when we uh, went to the field with Lucien is the green bridge. What it means, you keep the soil permanent covered during the dry period. Why? For example, we have soybeans. After soybeans, we can plant corn associated with brachialia. When you harvest corn, you keep brachialia and grow until to kill and create a mulch protecting the soil. And the next soybean crop will be planted and developed in this kind of uh, uh, cover. Uh, developing a very good crop and decreasing the risk. So, what the Green Bridge promotes? Promote, for example, soil temperature control and biological activity constantly, all year. A physical barrier against evaporation in the dry period, the water from capillarity is stopped on the, in the surface. The roots up, occupy all pores and also going deeper, try to absorb water and nutrients. And in the end, these roots that develop deeper can add carbon and in, increase the capacity of the soil to storage carbon. And an, very, another important information that 60% of carbon accumulated in the soil comes from crop residues, in special roots. So in this case, what we intend with a, a no-till cropping system, create a, a, a rotation with roots that can add uh, amounts of carbon in different layers to create their uh, support for water storage or uh, nutrients cycling and many other benefits that the roots can promote in the soil and for the biological activity. Root rotation is the, the key word. An example in the a Capuaba farm is from Zecão, José Carlos Soares, Lucien, and Serge Buzinac had been there many times and talked with uh, Zecão, and he's showing this combination, corn and brachiaria, and you can see the roots of corn developing with the brachiaria. And now, in detail, after the brachiaria was uh, 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 <clears throat> that the roots keep on the soil and the soil beans is the roots of soil beans is, com is sharing is is uh, interacting with a brachiaria it's a very nice situation simulate water biological activity nutrient cycling and absorption so if we protect the soil, if we protect the aggregates, we re reduce the decomposition rate in no-till. However, the, the losses is still high and it is a big challenge for us try to uh, input carbon 
in a amount greater than this level of equilibrium. Let's see this information. For example, in Ponta Grossa, if we add one ton of carbon through biomass, 73.6% is lost to the atmosphere as a CO2. Look, no two. If you're conventional, you lose 100% and a part of the soil. In Sinop, is a 13 south latitude, Ponta Grossa is a 25th. There, 85.7%, high temperature, high rainfall distribution. And Primavera do Leste, also in Mato Grosso, is still high, the, 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 uh, the losses by the composition. Summarizing, uh, we need to develop a system with a high carbon input to offset these losses. Understand? And in the, the, the conversion rate in subtropical is 14 to 26.4 percent. What it means. If we apply one ton of a carbon to residues, 14 to 26 percent is converted to soil organic carbon. In tropical, 11 to 20. It's a it's a big challenge. We need it to sink all the time to offset carbon. So, in this paper that we published in Land Degradation, and Lucien is one of the co-authors, is was uh, remarkable because we define the minimum amount of carbon to the crop residues to maintain the carbon dynamic equilibrium. Or zero balance, what it means. When you look at this axis here, zero, when these lines, because it's an annual carbon input, annual carbon input uh, to the year, cross here, we have the minimum amount for the zero balance. In the sequestration, zero soil, organic carbon gain or sequester, zero. So we need at least 5.3 to 6 ton per hectare, carbon per hectare per year, is equivalent to 11.7 to 13.3 to maintain the zero balance. Our challenge is to add carbon above this level. So, we need at least to obtain positive carbon balance, we need to input 16.9 or 17 tons to 18.6 or 19 tons of dry matter per hectare per year. Below this, we have a risk, low carbon accumulation close to the zero balance. So how can we develop a strategy for this one? I'd like to present two study cases. This two study case uh, is based in and, uh, three levels of sequestration that we are working on now in Brazil. We submitted this paper this year uh, and it's under reveal. And we created the accessible, reachable, and potential level for tropical and subtropical based in 117 observations taken from 63 uh, peer reviewed papers published in Brazilian soils comparing conventional and no till. And we had uh, uh, three. Uh, sequestration rates, accessible is more ease, uh, reachable represent uh, a system with more complexity and potential with a high complex system involving uh, a different species. So let's back to the, the first uh, uh, part 
when we presented the 2020, uh, 2022 article. There, we explained the, <clears throat> the biomass obtained the measurement in the native vegetation, 95.6%. In the total soil organic carbon, 0 to 100 centimeters, 100 to 30. And the biomass total plus soil, 225.6. We lost 95.6 by vegetation burning and 27 for 27%, 27% we are losing uh, <clears throat> through soil tillage. So when we implant, adopt, and maintaining no two different kind of no two cropping seeds with different carbon rates or biomass carbon input rates, we uh, uh, obtained that for this example, uh, an annual biomass carbon input 8.38, we recover, we recover 17.2 tons of carbon in the soil in eight years, whose sequestration rate was 2.15, but the balance uh, losses minus recovery is a minus 105.4 tons. It's still negative balance. And we calculate the turnover time or the time to recover carbon loss in vegetation and the soil. And we estimated 49 years. It means it's one generation. It's not so uh, complicated, but we need a tremendous effort to develop cropping system that uh, comprise the three pillars adding high biomass input in no-till system. So the example of a Capoaba farm uh, shows show us that the rotation is five years. In four years, soybean is the main summer crop, and only in one year, rice was the main crop. And the other, the second crop, is a is a combination: core plus fertilaria, uh, uh, plant mix, turnip, and core and brachiaia. Well, and uh, we we measure uh, the balance in accounting the input less <clears throat> output. The input was based on the decomposition rate of the conversion of biomass carbon in 19%, the conversion rate in this SOC. The biomass carbon input was measured in the uh, Capoava farm. The output was 1.2% per year is a, a soil decomposition rate or organic matter is a, in, in no-till, in this no-till, and the, the stock, carbon stock is 40.5. So this is a, a, the distribution, E1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The components of balance, the components of balance, Show annual dry matter input, carbon annual input, conversion, losses, and final balance. In between the year one and year four, we had uh, some variation, especially uh, the input by the second crop, because soybean produced very good yields. However, uh, the, the, the second crops have a strong variation. In the first year, 19.88 tons of dry matter and seven tons of carbon. If you're looking at in the first two, the first year one and year two, we uh, uh, added more carbon than the minimum amount to reach the equilibrium. Year three and year four, less carbon. And if we look the balance was decreasing, but it's almost zero. 
with this guy. Why was not here? Because the first two years offset or compensate the uh, the year three, the year four. However, when he repeat in the year five, the first combination using the year one, we recover which more high yields, high biomass input based in, in the two important things. We increase the diversity of the system in this kind of combination here, account soybean, corn, brachiaria, clotaria, mix of plants in seven species, we can account here at least 13 to 15 species that create a good biodiversity, uh, uh, results in the increase of biological activity, promoting the carbon flow uh, during the all five years, and resulting in accumulation and preserving and protecting the aggregate. In the other situation, in a soil with 84% of sand, only 12 or 10% of clay, this situation used more grasses, less diversity, but with a predominance of grass. Good combination, soybean was the legume in four years and in another combination, including uh, grasses with a high biomass carbon input capacity. So if we look the same balance, we can uh, uh, observe that the, uh, <clears throat> the first Four years, we, with this system, with a high intensive biomass carbon input, increase the addition in all of those years, the minimum amount of carbon that was related in 5.3, uh, all uh, uh, inputs were higher than it. And the sequestration was a little greater and the losses with less and the positive balance with one important uh, uh, with important situation when repeat the, the the in the year five the rotation used in the year one the combination we improve a lot the soybean yields the <clears throat> dry matter input the carbon input and the sequestration rate was the highest in this period. So uh, when we uh, look the contest the combination and, and making the goal and the carbon input, we create a, a capacity of soil resilience, biodiversity, carbon accumulation, profitable system, and less CO2 emissions. We did on a scale based in the, uh, uh, with a, a zero point in our experiment in Luca de Rio Verde, that we <clears throat> had a 49 years to recover all carbon lost in the soil and the vegetation with these rates. In Bahia model, uh, we had more input, but the highest, uh, highest decomposition because of the same soil. And we left to seven, six, seven years to recover. In Capoaba farm, a little less input, but the, good diversity as in 90 years. However, when you use a simple system, so you've been corn, so you've been corn, so you've been corn, we decrease the inputs, we decrease, we up, uh, uh, add carbon less than the, the minimum amount to the equilibrium level, and we need 124 years. 
if we use Serbian monoculture, we we add 1.24 tons per year. Look, 1.24, 4.4, 6.17, 8.4, 9.4, 10.4. Thirty-eight. That means we, uh, if we simplify the system, we decrease the carbon input. To, we expose the soil for other uh, 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 damages, special for the water rainfall impact and the dry periods. So, if you want system with free, high resilience, profitable, with carbon accumulation, we need to look in for positive carbon balance. And a simple system, simplified system with monoculture is a negative balance. So if we, uh, uh, if we looking for the success of the system, we start with a no-till, based in the permanent cover, soil permanent cover with diversity in above ground and below ground. We needed to protect the aggregates. We needed to control the oxidation to restore and accumulate carbon. So, well, it's a short presentation, but I think that uh, we try to, to give a, 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 a summarization of our research program. And carbon agriculture means uh, that uh, we needed to use the 10 R's. 10 R's. What it means? The first one, reinvent the system, always. Rethink all actions that we need to do to innovate the system. We need to rebuild the parts of the system that had a problem. We need to recycle all materials and combine with other actions like a fertilization spray. Everything we needed to recycle. We need to revitalize this, the biological cycles, especially uh, the carbon turning and nitrogen turning all year long. We need to reconnect physical, chemical, and biological attributes. We need to reorient our strategies to maintain the soil permanent cover. We need to revalue the system. And we need to reactivate the research. Why? We need to do it because we have to regenerate the soil, preserve the soil biota and the future generation. This is a carbon agriculture. This is the SDV. And I would like to thank Lucien because he think a lot about all these things. And the, fi the final uh, slide now, he is receiving from the rector of UEPG the title of a doctor honoris causa. And he is the Lyon Serene. You know, he did his mission. He did everything. And thanks. Thanks.